A six-year-old program in Salinas aimed at farm workers has been receiving some national attention lately. It's designed to teach English as a second language to migrant workers, but its originator admits that it goes much further than that. It also teaches the workers how to use their second language to live and do business in an Anglo society. Rita Williams reports on the program known as English on Wheels. Rita, excuse me, please. I already told you twice, Mrs. Ramirez. Go back to the waiting room, please. We'll call you when it's your turn. But it's already four hours, Senorita, and I have seven kids, you know. And my husband, he no home. He looked for work in Modesto. Well, I'm sorry, but you were 50 minutes late for your appointment, you know. Obviously, this theatrical presentation is not the high-budget television product of network programming chiefs. It is the unlikely brainchild of this woman, 51-year-old Lottie Marcus, a Jewish refugee from Austria. During the week, she leaves her husband and three children in Carmel and rents a room in Salinas just to spend her days in this classroom. With her unconventional approach, Lottie Marcus is teaching English and a whole lot more. She's teaching her students, Salinas Valley farm workers, how to use English to make it in their adopted Anglo world. The videotapes are short dramas that deal with basic problems faced by the workers. They are written and produced on less than a shoestring budget by Marcus's writer husband, Alan. Their intent is simple. By learning to confront problems like welfare, housing, and immigration, the workers also will pick up a working command of the English language. We are very close to their real lives, and we individualize their problems and, and deal with the problems that come up and incorporate that into the curriculum. So we never get into the sort of education as separate from the world situation. But in practice, the theory is not as easy as it sounds. Most of the students in this class, as well as the hundred or so in the other Marcus classes, are illiterate or only semi-literate in their own native Spanish. In addition to that learning difficulty are their jobs. As migrant workers, they're migrant students, too. These workers average only four consecutive classes, then drop out. It's not that they master English that fast, it's just that a call goes out for pickers and these people head for the fields. But at this time, from November until March, the Salinas Valley farmland is barren, and Lottie Marcus's classes are overflowing. The problem of need for the Spanish speaking is the problem of lack of information. Marcus hasn't always taught in a classroom like this one in Hebron Heights, deep in the heart of the Mexican-American barrio. From the inception of the program in 1973 until last August, this van was Marcus's primary vehicle for learning. In fact, this is where the program gets its name, English on Wheels. But the wheels became a casualty of Proposition 13. The Salinas School Board funding of the project was cut by more than half. Marcus successfully sought some outside financial help and is still looking for more. We used the van to go out to speak to Americans. And I remember when we were going to a post office session once that a woman said to me, Maestro, we're really like communists who are going out there. And I thought, oh my God, this is really much more charged than I had thought. For now, at least, English on Wheels is grounded here, rent-free, in the Salinas Adult Education Building. Here's an abbreviated version of how the videotape training session works. In this case, students and a half dozen visiting Anglo community officials begin their joint learning session by viewing a Marcus tape. This dramatization by mask actors shows a typical language misunderstanding many of these students face when applying for welfare. You have to sign in this other place then. See down here? That says where it says you're in the country without papers. And afterwards, we have to forward a copy to the Bureau of Immigration. They'll probably never bother you, see? The Immigration Department can't keep up. It's just a requirement we have to do. That's all. Ay, senorita. Please, please don't make me sign. Marcus as facilitator, students and the Anglos, Americans as Marcus calls them, continue to discuss the issues the dramatization has raised. Then several students volunteer to act out the roles of the welfare applicant, a role many have had outside the classroom. Yes, 
Put them in the ministry. Oh, the police, yeah, I know about that. Need your visa number, your green card number right there, and I need you to sign right there. What happens if I don't have a green card? Then what I, would happen? I can't fill that out, and you can't sign there, and I can't send the papers to and you don't get any benefits. The threat of deportation is very real in this dramatization, as it is for many of these students or members of their families who are in this country illegally. This time, the applicant, in need of aid for his family, produces a forged immigration card and signs for benefits. And surprisingly, that deception elicits sympathy and understanding from most of the Anglo guests health officials, employment workers, and teachers. One junior high school teacher tells about assigning a false immigration number to a student of hers, an illegal alien in dire need of medical attention. So I merely gave him another name and a number, and we got the dental work done, and no one has ever questioned the papers and never questioned the number or anything. And the kid got the dental work done. And I don't feel really guilty about it. We do that quite often. The recipient may be forced by the nature of the system to tell an untruth to the extent to protect themselves. The students encourage the visitors to play the parts of the welfare worker. Teacher Kurt Meyer agrees and shows that a different approach can go a long way toward bridging the communications gap. Good morning. A little bit late for the appointment, huh? Uh, yeah, I, I had to take my kid to the hospital. Uh, there was only one pay phone and it was busy, that's why I didn't call. Okay, okay. Is your child all right? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Okay, you're here for food stamps. Yeah. Now, um, besides the food stamps, and now we know about the medical that you may need, the medical money, is there anything else that you see as a need that you have? Um, I really don't know. I think this social work is good. I think. I don't work. I don't work. Marcus says these role reversals help to clear up misconceptions both Anglos and Mexican Americans have about each other. And students learn how to exist in a foreign culture, and maybe, just maybe, they'll learn some English along the way. Una vez, That's called what? Emergency It's called general relief. General relief. General relief. General relief assistance. Have you learned English since you've been here? Yes, I have learned English a little bit. Uh -huh. Why do you think this program is, is good or why do you come here? Uh, because uh, the teacher is very good, uh, the method is very good. I am happy in this program. I think it's working, but we have to be very modest about making a, a lot of claims. We're still really researching how well we can use all this stuff. Not all of the 80,000 people in this agricultural town are supportive of Lottie Marcus and her self-style English program. In this post-Proposition 13 era, Marcus had to seek outside help to keep the program going this year. She contacted 45 shippers, growers, and packers in Salinas for contributions. 25 flatly refused. Those growers and packers opposed to English on Wheels declined to comment publicly when we were in Salinas. It was during the United Farm Workers' strike against lettuce growers. However, this letter from one large grower is typical of the negative response to the program. It reads in part, My view is that yours is more a social action program than an educational program. We feel very strongly that the field is well covered at the present time by the unions, various federal and state agencies, and by our own rather extensive in-house employee relations program. Therefore, we will not be a financial contributor to your program. The man who goes to bat for Marcus each year when the Salinas School Board considers refunding English on Wheels is not surprised by such criticism. I think that the basic thrust of the program has been accepted, but uh, we even had some people scrape off flags off our English on Wheels van. Some people would say that it's too much social action and not actually teaching English. I would say that uh, we will take any method that we need to within the law to teach English, and I think that if it is controversial and people may learn a little better, then we're very supportive. And surprisingly, in this polarized community, a third of the packers, shippers, and growers Lottie Marcus contacted for contributions agreed with Royal's assessment of the program. Bill Bolstad, general manager of a packing company, is one of those. He and 14 others contributed a total of $32,000 to keep English on wheels in business this year.
Do you feel like you're in a minority, or do you think it's too much of a social action program? No, I think that uh, most of the grower shippers are um, conscious of uh, programs that are constantly coming at them, and they don't have the time to discern whether the program is valuable or not valuable, and so they just generally are negative on all programs because they've been burned before. There are those, even within the barrio, who are skeptical of the program. This woman is making her fourth visit to the class in three years. She is a farm worker soon to give birth to her fourth child. Her husband, a mechanic, didn't want her learning English. Did he want you to come to the class? No. Why? Because my, my husband think, thinks, uh, thinks the woman star in the school, maybe more out the men. She's going to be more than the man. That's right. You said it very good. Despite obstacles like these, Lottie Marcus sees herself as a migrant minister. I really think that if I can do this for a year or two years, both our students will begin to become better questioners and the Americans will become better listeners. That I think is, it would be a real achievement, so they can communicate without a teacher. And if that happens, Lottie Marcus will have succeeded in putting herself, the teacher, out of business.